Hello, this is Celeste here from Aguascalientes, and you're watching Teacher Learning Task with Pili Herrera and Benjamin Stewart. Day, June 30th, 2018. My name is Benjamin Stewart calling from beautiful Aguascalientes, Mexico. Morning, everybody. This is Piri Herrera also here in Aguascalientes. Uh, today, uh, Saturday, June uh, the 30th, and um, getting ready for uh, a short term of vacations here at work, but still working on the last things before uh, taking this little time for resting. Benjamin, how are you today? Excellent. Yeah, we're just summing up. Things have been kind of crazy this month as they normally are at the end of the semester. We've got one more week of class, not really of classes, but administrative work uh, before we uh, go on two-week vacation, but uh, planning on keeping up with teacher learning cast. So hopefully uh, those of you who are going on vacation can catch us either in the live broadcast or in the recordings. We're going to try to continue producing uh, content uh, related to teaching and learning and so feel free to join us and and give us feedback let us know what you'd like to see um, we're going to uh, continue with the Facebook page so I think that's one of the best ways and easiest ways to reach out to us if you want to provide feedback or even be part of the show we're always looking for teachers who want to be part of the broadcast to come in and and we've done that in several occasions in the past and really have uh, enjoyed it so let us know if you want to be part of the, uh, the broadcast. You can find us in Facebook and uh, Teacher Learning Cast if you do a, a search there. In fact, uh, I'd like to spend just a second here to show uh, the viewers, uh, our audience, a slightly different way that you can access some of the content uh, that we've been producing. This is episode number 16, so we've had 15 different uh, recordings of different uh, information related to teaching and learning. And we now have a new way that you can access this information uh, beyond just ac accessing it through uh, YouTube, through the, um, the playlist. So if you go into uh, the Facebook page, there's a post dated June 22nd, and there is a, a post for Trello. In fact, today I'm going to be talking more specifically about Trello, but we created a board in Trello for you to have an alternative way of viewing some of the videos, uh, in fact, all of the videos that we've created thus far. So here, this is a public board, and in Trello here, we, I've got, uh, we've got it listed by subject. So currently, and these, these could be subject to change, this is just kind of uh, how it has emerged so far, but we've got different topics as lists here. So we have one for learning theory, teaching practice, material design, networking philosophy, um, and I'm trying to scroll over here, and Tech Talk, which is what we're going to be talking about today in episode number 16. Uh, but this is just an, another way that you can access these cards and then ultimately the links that go into the video. So if you click here, this will take you to this video in YouTube. All right, so this is... a uh, a post and just a, a page that I wanted to share with you and since all of this information here is public you can join this and leave comments as well so this is another way that you can leave comments very specific to each of the episodes and so I wanted to share this with you and again you can access this via Facebook or uh, page teacher learning cast and uh, feel free to uh, favorite that this Trello board so that you can have easy access to all of the, the content that we're uh, producing. Right, really uh, looking for new ways to organize this idea and keep in touch with everybody. Uh, we have had some interesting guests in some of the sessions and uh, we, we will try to keep on uh, bringing people so you can uh, have different opinions and different comments about different situations in classes and Benjamin is always looking for different technologies to support uh, everything we are doing everything he does in his daily activity also 
and it's really interesting to work with him uh, and see all these new ideas coming uh, into action. Uh, last uh, last episode, we had a um, talk uh, Universidad. Is that right, Ben? Yes. Can you? We did. Uh, we had a right. Yeah, we had a great talk. In fact, uh, in episode 15 where we talked about the music model is very interesting how to go about motivating right. students. And there's I just to remember coming up with a lot of additional topics that we could use to kind of expand on those ideas to look at uh, specifically, I'm thinking differentiated instruction, how to go out and give more agency to learners. But it was a really interesting uh, talk with Peter Riley and uh, also the great team there at Universidad Panamericana here in, in Aguascalientes where they've had uh, many teaching conferences and had just a great talk with them. Uh, and it's good to see that uh, there are, you know, universities or organizations of teachers really working together along with their students to produce uh, these wonderful learning and professional development opportunities for, for all teachers uh, here locally in Aguas Calientes. So it's uh, kind of, uh, it's, this is precisely the type of things that we're looking for that if your school, your institution are doing some really good things with uh, the promotion of pe teacher development or just with their students, uh, these are exactly the types of topics that we want to learn more about. And um, this will give you an opportunity to uh, share kind of what you've been doing and promote what uh, successes and even challenges that you've had as well. So uh, yeah, it was a very interesting talk that we had uh, uh, with uh, Peter Riley with his uh, research. I think he's going to be publishing uh, some articles related to their findings. So I look forward to seeing that and hopefully uh, maybe we can have him back on and uh, discuss more uh, in depth some of his research findings that he ultimately now will uh, be um, uh, publishing. Right. The interesting thing about all of this is that we are uh, having contact with people as Benjamin mentioned, that it's trying new things and different uh, different uh, interventions in the classrooms to adapt these uh, new trends in in education, in teaching, and also in technology, which is today's topics for us. Uh, today, we want to discuss a little bit about different aspects in in, in technology and 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 things that we are uh, planning to do, and uh, things that have happened in the classroom. And uh, I don't know, Ben, where where you want to start today. Yeah, so we're going to talk, uh, it's going to be kind of geeky in the sense that we're just going to be talking about technology. Right. Um, but uh, we want to share a couple of things. Uh, you know, Pity and I uh, have the benefit of also having our office space very close to each other. So we find invariably a lot of opportunities just to kind of throw ideas back and forth about what we're doing with technology. Um, so hopefully you uh, have someone that you can kind of bounce ideas off from as well. Uh, but this semester, as we're finishing this semester and, and thinking now in terms of next semester, you know, the process that I go by uh, every semester is I try to look at my current experiences and see if, if it's working, you know, and, and invariably every semester I find kind of areas where, you know, things may have gone well, others areas where maybe I would like to try something different for the next semester. And so this semester is no different. And one of the things that uh, I wanted to share today with you is this technology, this uh, of Trello, this site, the service that they are, are providing. But I, I wanted to share with you first kind of a, the thought process that goes through my mind. And I think this is a, a, a thought process that probably we all might go through before we even decide on the technology, because I. I don't want to propose that uh, I go about it by just going into and trying technology ju just for the sake of trying it. There's a lot of things that I that go into uh, the decision making process before I think one ultimately decides in, in, in the technology. And I wanted to share just a few minutes with you this uh, this image, this graph that I created to try to help articulate some of the thought processes or the decisions that I make before I decide ultimately on the technology that I want to use. Uh, so here in this image, uh, in the middle of this really are the theories, right? So it's all based on the theories that we either espouse, those are the ones that we promote and talk about, 
and the ones that we actually use, the in-use theories. So the, the theories really are, and I use the word theories in the plural because I think ultimately in, uh, it's, it's more about using a variety of different theories, whatever those theories are. Uh, there's seldom maybe just one theory that we all uh, are, are using, that there's probably a combination of theories, right? So uh, regardless of what those theories are, there are certain theories that are going to be part or provide the basis of the learning experience that you find yourself in. Now, based on those learning theories, there are really two main decisions here that I think that we need to ask ourselves. And the first is the type of communication that will be involved in how students communicate within, within themselves and also the way that you, the teacher, will communicate with uh, the students. The second being the delivery of content. So thinking in terms of communication, really, the idea is how do you want your students to communicate? Do you Will it be... Uh, in real time, that is synchronous types of communication. That is, I think the easiest example, when you're in face-to-face -face class, you're actually talking to your students in real time. That would be an example of a synchronous communication. Asynchronous would be communication over time. So maybe that is either via email or some sort of forum or any type of communication, even with uh, Facebook, if you're posting over the course of a day or a week, certain topics, um, Twitter, for example, those are, uh, to various degrees, examples of asynchronous communication or communication over time. So when you're thinking about the course content, the types of activities that you're going to employ in your class, that's, this is a, a very important decision that you're going to need to make and one that you need to decide on even before you start to think about what technologies then will facilitate those forms or those types of communication. Then the second being content delivery. Now, when I use the word content, I really look at it in two different ways. If you think about it in terms of input versus output, the, the content, um, usually we think of it as being input types of content, right? So if it's a book, if it's a website, article, whatever, whatever it is, it serves more uh, in terms of some sort of input that the students will uh, rely on uh, to gain some sort of knowledge or skill. But I also want us to think about content as being output driven, right? So some of our students might actually produce content that then serves as input back into the learning process. So it becomes this cyclical process of content possibly serving as an, as a, a, an outcome or an output, and then also uh, kind of recycling back into the input cycle. So. So think of it in terms of delivery of content. How do we want to deliver in our classes this content, both in terms of input and in terms of output or outcomes if we're, to, if we're looking at how students are producing outcome? I think we could also look at content, any content that we, the teacher, create as well for, for the course. But really, we're looking at what technologies will facilitate, how do we want this to deliver uh, to be delivered into the, the classroom. And I know this image is under the heading flipped, cla flipped learning or the flipped classroom. And we've had, uh, we had a great session with Ken Bauer on flipped learning, but really this is a discussion of flipped learning in essence, right? When we look at the different type, types, types of technologies that we're gonna be using uh, to make these decisions about the types of communication and the forms of delivery of content, this is really the, the essence of, of flipped learning. Um, this this uh, image or this uh, shaded area here represents the current interactive learning environment. The key word here is the current, that is what's happening now in the classroom in terms of uh, teaching and learning. And it is basically the reality of where the teacher and the students are at that particular moment. This dotted line here represents the goal or the, the objective of, of, the, of the learner in terms of some ideal self. So if we think of it in terms of selves here, right, this is, this is the current self, the interactive learning environment. This dotted line could be the ideal self. So this is very personal and individualized how the student looks at their learning experience and what goals that he or she wants to uh, achieve. We also have this ought to self, and this is interesting because the ought to self would be where teachers 
maybe, for example, in formal education have expectations of where students need to be. So you have this ideal self and this ought to self, which could be the same, but it could also be different. It could be conflicting even in, in, at times, depending on the situation. So when we're thinking about the technologies to, to be used for a, a particular class, I think one of the things we need to look at is this, these, this difference between the ideal self, the ought to self, and also the collective goals if we're looking in terms of maybe even students working together in groups or teams and they have maybe particular group goals that they need to achieve. So this idea, how do we, how we close this gap between the current interactive learning environments and these possibly three different types of uh, goals that, uh, that are part of the learning experience, these are all very important considerations when looking into what types of technology you want to use to help facilitate closing this, this gap. Finally, the last decision, and I think probably the most important and one that I wrestle with uh, a lot myself, is this difference between closed and open learning environments. So how open or closed do we want to make the learning experience in our class, right? So even when, when we look at students creating content, is that gonna be made available publicly? Is this gonna be made available only to the class? Is this going to be made available only to the institution only? Maybe other classes and other from other semesters. All of those types of decisions need to be part of uh, the process of determining what kind of technology one will ultimately use as, as a teacher. So I know there's a lot here, but basically uh, the point here is that there are certain decisions we, we need to make uh, when we decide on what kind of technologies we want to use. And this past semester, January, June of 2018, I used uh, Canvas. And I'm not going to go into Canvas a lot, but I will say that Canvas is a wonderful learning uh, platform. It's a learning management system, an LMS. And it is very uh, useful if you're looking for something that is a complete system, that is that it's a, a complete uh, platform where you can maintain grades, you can have discussions, you can have individual pages, assignments, everything can reside in this one space where students can access it using their own mobile technology. Since Canvas has a lot of uh, good apps that they can use, uh, there are no problems student, having students access their work and all of the content for the class in Canvas using their mobile apps, both for cell phones and also for tablets. So uh, this is kind of where I'm coming from. And one of the reasons, I think one of the main reasons why I'm looking and considering something different from uh, this platform is that I write, I have a lot of writing classes, right? So a lot of my students are using Google Docs to share with me where I provide feedback. And in this platform, what I had my students do was they would work in Google Docs and then they would copy and paste certain assignments into Canvas as a grade. And it worked. I didn't really find particularly any problems uh, with that per se, but I think it was just another additional step students had to go through and uh, to submit a, an assignment. So one of the things, one of the reasons why I decided on looking at other forms of the technology is I, I wanted to try to simplify that process, try to cut down the steps and having them have to first join Canvas and throughout the whole semester go back and forth between copying and pasting certain assignments uh, into two different places. So um, this was, and the final thing is I wanted to have this as open as possible. This class is open because uh, Canvas uh, which is part of uh, infrastructure.com, they maintain these courses openly, which this course is completely open. So you can go to their commons area and access all the open courses that they, that they have. And, and this course that I created for my students was one of these courses that was made uh, public uh, to, to everyone. So, um, so that was one of the kind of the rationale for moving from Canvas to Trello. Here is Trello, um, and this is the main page with the boards. Let me go back here first to show you the home page. Now, I've only spent a week with Trello, so this discussion today is just to kind of give you a very brief 
uh, description of kind of where I'm at with Trello and not to really, I'm not going to dive too deep because for, for uh, first of all, I'm not an expert in Trello. Um, but I want to show you how easy it is really to just after a week to how you can bring in certain content for your course and actually have your whole course on Trello. So here, this is the homepage, which basically just provides a quick view of highlights of any activity that, um, that, has taken place in any of the boards that you uh, that you've had. So here I have the different boards, and in fact, the board that I just showed you just a few minutes ago with Teacher Learning Cast that was one of the the boards. But I'm going to show you an example of a composition, which is a course I'm going to teach next semester for uh, third to fifth semesters uh, students who are studying a BA to be uh, English language teachers. And this composition course is a 16-week course, and uh, it's divided into four units. Units one and three are academic essays. Units two is a business type of um, unit where students are writing business correspondence, like business letters and formal emails and so on. And the fourth is creative writing. Fourth unit is creative writing, where they're going to be uh, creating poetry for the most part. So here you'll notice in this board that I've divided all of the lists, these are lists by weeks, okay? So we're looking at one board and each of the lists I've divided into weeks and each list have what's called cards, okay? So here we have all of the 16 weeks uh, for the course divided into different lists. And again, you'll see because I've just started, there's some you know, I have more content in certain weeks and, and than others, and this is just because I am still working on on this. This is going to get be for for next semester, August of 2018. So here you'll notice that I have this set up in the different weeks, and what I really like about the Trello platform here is that you have these labels, and I want to show you here under menu and labels. These are the labels that I'm currently considering for this course. And of course you can add labels and change the names and colors and all of that. But what I really like about this is coming up with a good labeling system where I can identify each of these cards. Each of these cards is going to be either an activity or it could also be content. It can really be anything that you want it to be. But I like how I can label these different cards and over uh, time I can get a bird's eye view right of the different types of activities and, and uh, discussions that I'm having with my students so I can see if, if, if I have kind of a balanced approach I know that this pink color are for strategies so I can look at my my scheduling throughout the week to see okay do I have an, enough strategies that I'm working with my students so that they can have kind of a you know a metacognitive approach to their learning you know throughout the course I know that black is for assignments that they're going to receive a grade right so I can kind of see from a bird's eye view when they're going to be graded and they can see this as well as they become more familiar with this labeling system and so I this is really uh, the green here it represents orientation that is kind of where their activities that kind of help orient them as to where they've been in the past and where they're going to be going in the future and so on. So uh, again, this labeling system I think is really nice uh, because it is adaptable, of course, and you can, uh, you can, you know, tailor it to your own liking depending on your, your own course. And so the idea with Trello with these cards is that as the course goes, because this is just the planning and as you know, uh, PD, it's very uh, common to have changes as you are implementing your class and and so what I really like about this is it's very easy to maneuver and change these cards. You can change them from different weeks to different, uh, you know, in different lists. You can, you can move the cards to different boards if you want. So let's say I open up this card and this is exactly what the student's going to be seeing as well. You might have a description here, but you can move these to different uh, different boards, different lists. You know, it's very adaptable in that sense. Whoops, didn't want to do that. And so that's what I really like about this. You can create a calendar 
and have a calendar view for students, especially for like assignments. And I don't have, like here you'll see a few now that they start to pop up. Any of these cards, you can set dates and those dates then will appear in the calendar. So this is another a view that they can that they can access. And one of the main things I really like about Trello is because although we're looking at Trello now on a desktop, the benefit of Trello is having this uh, be available on the mobile phone. So this is what it kind of looks like for the student. And for the most part, you know, students are using uh, their cell phones to access the information. So this is what it looks like for them. You'll notice composition being right here. Okay, and of course, all of this updates automatically on the web. So as I update it, they see these updates on their phone. And this is, and it even maintains the same background. So if we compare the backgrounds here of the typewriter, it's the same as what it appears on the phone. And see, they can scroll over week to week and access the content very easily with their cell phone. And that you can, if you hold and click and drag, you can click and drag the cards around very easily as a teacher, not as the student, because I've, I've shared this with students for, um, for them just to view the Trello website. So they're not able to edit. If you, there are cases where you might create a board where you can have them uh, be able to edit and that that's a whole nother dynamic but these these boards you can have boards within boards right so i could have a board for my students to do some sort of task um, and embed that whole uh, performance task as a board into my overall board for the for the course okay so i won't get into that right now but I just want to show you what the students see and what I see as a teacher and how easy it is for it now, for example, changing the background and just kind of navigating throughout uh, Trello with the phone is really a joy. It's super easy, very uh, intuitive, very user friendly. Here you have some options with calendars like I just added this calendar and, and so on. So uh, this is essentially Trello and one of the things I'm kind of debating on right now is to what degree I want to use Trello. I'm fairly convinced I want to use Trello next semester, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use Google Classroom because I almost see that this is a replacement of Google Classroom as well and just maintain student documents in, um, in Trello itself. The last thing I want to share, PD, if I could, is in this first list, I have a card called Writer's Docs. And what I have here is a, an option to embed Google within the card. So here I've done it twice. I've done it as the syllabus. So here, this is an attachment of a document in Google that the students can access directly from the Trello card and they can see the syllabus. And then students can also access this open folder. This is a shared folder now within Google where later I will add a list of all the student documents. And one of the things I always like to do in my class, in my writing classes especially, is to have students share their documents. And this is going to be a very easy way for them to share all of their documents with each other and with me. And um, I think having it set up this way, I like the integration of Trello and Google in this way. And th this is just a few things that you can do. We haven't even talked about Twitter or uh, there's a Gantt chart that you can do if you're into Gantt charts. But um, just with Google alone and the Calendar app that it can also be linked to Google Calendar, there are many, many different ways to really streamline, I see streamlining the, the learning experience. Because for me, what I want to do is make it as easy as possible for me to, on the fly, share and, and organize my class with my students so that it's very easy for them to see what we're doing at that particular time, what we've done in the past, and where we're going. And I think Trello offering a bird's eye view like this uh, allows both me and my students to kind of see what we're doing and the activities that we're going to be doing and again, just making it 
uh, simpler as far as having students submit assignments and having the feedback, the way that I interact with my students, streamlining that as much as possible, making it easier for, for me as well. So basically, that's, um, that's Trello in a nutshell. I don't know, Pity, if you have, uh, if I missed anything or if you have something that wasn't clear. No, it, it, was, it was really clear. I just have a, I just have a question. Um, it, you work in the cards, and then uh, you can fix them up in the desktop view we had, but uh, it automatically also fits into the calendar if you make it available. And uh, I mean, you just work in one card. I mean, it, for each of the uh, elements you're going to work with during the week. And, and then you just uh, decide where it displays. I mean, you don't have to reorganize it again when you go to the calendar? Uh, no, so let, let me give you an example and let me know if I answer your question. So let's say that um, I'm going to review the syllabus and here you're going to have options to add dates. And I'm looking for it now, and I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay, due date. So every different card, every right. card will allow you to set a due date. Now, by default, there are no due dates, right? So if you just create a card, it's not going to create a due date automatically. So therefore, it won't appear in the calendar. But let's say that I want to set this. Or I'm going to review the syllabus uh, July 6th of this year and I can either set a time or leave it the way it is and I save it there. So review syllabus now has a due date and I'll close this and I'll immediately go now into the calendar and if I scroll through, if I go to August, mm -hmm. <clears throat> computer's a little slow here so bear with me. If I go to calendar and let's see, I go to August. Now it appears here. Now this is exactly what the students okay, are doing yeah. well, right? So because we're still in June, of course, I have to scroll forward. But ideally, you know, we're going to be in August and or you know, current, you know, very close to the current uh, dates. And as students open up this calendar, they can see, you know, what what they're doing, right? So you can decide as a teacher how much information you want to appear in the calendar. If it's going to be very, you know, every single you know, activity, or if it's just going to be key or most important activities that you want to stress, or, or perhaps it's just assignments, right, that you want to include in the calendar. But you have control over to what degree, you know, you want to uh, share that information in a calendar form. And again, on their phones, it's so easy for them to go into that board and go to that calendar and see, okay, what's, you know, what's going on for today or for this week. And that's what I really like. You can do that in Canvas, but it's not as nearly as intuitive and quick and easy to get to. And again, I just like the layout. I like how this works, and both from the teacher standpoint and the student standpoint, just the easiness of, of this very basic, really, idea of uh, – it actually comes from a – I think it's a Chinese uh, – uh, kind of an idea, this Kanban idea. And a lot of businesses like the Toyota company back in the 80s and 90s incorporated this very simple Kanban idea of just staying organized. And it's really kind of a throwback to that um, that uh, idea of basically listing essentially to-dos. You know, it's just a kind of a glorified to-dos list, if you will. So did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I, I was the the thing is that I'm having problems in reception here, and and sometimes you I hear you choppy. But yeah, I pretty much got my answer. I what I see here is that uh, this gives a lot of transparency to the way you are organizing and planning your classes. In other words, it's like giving me a view, uh, a a piece really decipher how you're thinking for this semester somehow you see yeah and you, you, you see what i mean 
Yeah, and sometimes students get overwhelmed and, and going overwhelmed in the sense that they look at all of this, right? And they're like thinking that, you know, I do all of this in one day or something, you know? And it, I, I know that it can be overwhelming, but I think um, I'm trying to go back to the canvas view here. Uh, the same idea here, if you compare the content, and this is just my personal opinion here, but if you look at this course, and I try to do the same thing uh, in Canvas, where I try to put up you know, all the information for the class, what we're going to do, but they look at like the modules, for example, they're going to see everything that we're going to do essentially for the whole course right here. Now, mm -hmm. of course, you know, I'm, I'm constantly changing, adding, and taking away things, but you know, they could very easily, for me, this is much more overwhelming, if you will, looking at all of this information, week one here, and then I, if I clap this, week two and week three, sorry, my computer's really slow today, but you'll notice these are all my weeks, right? It's just all a right. different way of viewing all of the content. Wow, my computer is going crazy, but... Um, yeah, so here you'll notice these are all the weeks, right? So I can open up all of these and see all of the detail for each of those weeks. So it's comparing this type of view to this type of view. And I don't know, for me, as a teacher, first of all, this I much prefer this way because of the color. It's a friendlier view. Yeah, it's and it's, I can go in detail here if I click in to each of these cards, okay, there I can find some more detail, right? But it doesn't give me all that detail at once, nor do I need it, nor do the stu students mm -hmm. need it. They need to see more or less kind of where they're at, and as they learn also these color codes that I'm going to try to make uh, explicit in the course, you know, they're going to learn how these, you know, how these activities hopefully tie together. I mean, that's the whole point that I'm trying to make here is that my activities and all the content that I'm doing that it has some sort of logical obvious a logical uh, flow to it and and it enables them to do more each week as they progress and increase their knowledge and skill in there in the subject so um, you know this is uh, this is one of the reasons why I really like Trello is actually it, it makes it easier I think uh, and for me personally and more intuitive in the way that I plan and I think once we get started, as you know, things are invariably going to change, then I just change accordingly. I can just move these cards so easily. And, and most of the time I'm on my phone. I'm, only, I'm showing you mainly the desktop, but you know, I spend 90% of my time on my phone. And this, all of this that I'm showing you now that I'm doing on my desktop, I can do. Uh, in fact, it's easier to do it on my phone. And that's what I really like, and that's what I like. Uh, I think the students are going to like just having that uh, visual appeal in uh, their own phone uh, in terms of the course that they're taking with me. Now, is there a way that I can uh, that we can just have a view? I mean, me as a student, uh, that I decide just to look at one week and I get rid of everything else and I just have a glance of the week. Um. To what I can do, and this is what I'm kind of debating on now, is um, like probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a system to move these cards. Like so, for example, the first week it's going to appear like it is now. This week one, the same way. Now, when I hit week two, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this week over here, okay? okay? And then leave everything else the same. Week three comes along, mm -hmm. I'm going to move week three over here. Now, why, why am I going to do that? Because probably in the phone, when they open up their phone, I want them to first see getting started, and I could decide later right. maybe I'll move getting started over too, but, but by default, that first bo uh, for the first list is going to be the current week. And okay. they can see then the history, you know, I, I still haven't decided, but I'm going to try that. I'm going to see how it works. To answer your question, I don't think there's one way to open up just a week view uh, to my knowledge. And again, I could be completely wrong. If anyone's watching this and is an expert and knows more about Trello than, than I do, please uh, post your comment. But I don't think 
there is a way to now what you can do pd and, and i think this is probably the best way to do this let me let me go back you can watch uh you can watch a, a list okay so i'm going to click here watch and again i'm i'm just mm -hmm. kind of experimenting at this point if i go back to my view my home view mm -hmm. there should be a way to have your watch Let's as see. a list as, as as the current li as, as the list that i just i have yeah, got to play around with i think the home what? this is the purpose of the home is to include yeah. the watch if i go down here yeah i don't see it but my, yeah but there must be a way but my point is that somehow i'm 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 kind of a little bit more of simplistic i i, I like to have it as clean as possible with with the uh, the, the just the exact information that may be needed for the current moment so in yeah. a personal approach i would rather prefer i mean it's in it, it's really necessary sometimes to have these views with all the information but maybe not at all time and uh and for example in, in my personal preferences i would rather go first through one week as simple as possible just in, in in the way to understand how it's organized and have a view and then later on having this view i would know everything else is pretty much the same and then i can have this wide view of of everything else but uh, i mean it's just a matter of um of uh focalizing because if we have this whole week's view and, and you make emphasis on just one obviously well you can focalize attention towards that but yeah, that, that, that was pretty much the idea of, of having the, the view of a week because uh, uh, somehow, for example, I, I don't know if you, if you visit my, my sites, I try to keep it as clean as possible in every single page, like the minimum information required. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And I know the students um, are, feel the same way. And I think this is um, one of the things that I'm still learning about here with Trello. I know that there's a way uh, to do this. And, and I think that uh, what we're going to find that there's students are going to have preferences on how they really like to access this. And I think Trello is going to give you those options. If um, and, and again, I've this this post here, this page here where it says um, highlights, I think is going to be where that's going to occur. But what I can't find here is with the watch, and that's what I'm still learning about, and, and I'll, I'll follow up with that uh, later. Um, but there has to be a way to do those watched lists that make it easier for the learner, for the user to access that information. Yeah, just, just with the idea, and, and not because exactly because of the list, because, for example, what happens to me in Facebook when you have this uh, scrolling down list is that there's a moment in which you are just fed up of uh, looking at it never ends right yeah and, and and i sometimes prefer just to have i mean if i'm looking for something maybe not that specific but uh to have a view of a beginning and an end uh, at least and that's why i mean just uh, uh just just a preference which i think sometimes students there are some students which which may be too overwhelmed by looking at I mean, maybe there's not a lot of information because right now this view that we are having right now in, in that in that view you had a moment ago, uh, mm -hmm. the kind of desktop, it's not really overwhelming. I mean, it's it's pretty simple if you take a, a look at it. But sometimes I I sense the students just by looking at the size of the letter and the different colors and and the amount of information, they just feel like oh, what am I or kind of lost. But uh, just ideas. I mean. Uh, for, for yeah, all good things to think about and things that I still need to work through before I start. But I think that this, when I clean up this um, home page again, I keep coming back to this home page. I think this is where this is like the news feed, if you will, right? right. This is where like I'm going to be posting mm -hmm. you know, different uh, ideas about what what's going on, um, and yeah, that's. But like here, like stop watching here. I can like that. It looks like right. that that 
what I don't see here is the syllabus that I just clicked on here, which should appear, I, I would think. Oh, uh, now, but, now that we are, I mean, that we're taking time, time on this because I think it's kind of interesting to see uh, how this works. I'm, I'm looking at the fact that you are having two writing groups, two different groups, right, for, for the following right. semester. And uh, are you planning uh, uh, through this platform to have some interaction amongst these two groups, one to the other? Like exchanging information or, or works or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I do that in all my classes, but um, I, I'm still looking at how that's going to work in, in Trello. But yes, I, I always, at some in some way, try to get both groups, because they're separate classes, right? Just for those who aren't familiar. Right. Two different groups, two different classes. So I basically teach the same class to two different groups. And so mm -hmm. the question is, do they have opportunities, two different group classes have opportunities to, to work together? And they do primarily through Google Drive. But if I can extend that into Trello more uh, through a conversational type of interaction, which is right. what I try to do, and, and, and have them interact more with each other, that's definitely what's, what I want to try to do. How, how, do, how do they do that in, in, Google, in Google Drive? Do they work on the same project? Do they exchange works? Or do they do teams from different groups, people, or what? Yeah, so if you're, what they do is I'll set up a, a doc for each student, and mm -hmm. I will, and I will do that myself. So before class starts, I will have already set up uh, all these documents with the student's name, and I will share the document um, with them directly. So let me show you what that's going to look like here, because there's two things here that you're asking, and one of them is related to sharing with me, the teacher, and another is sharing with themselves, the students. So With themselves, right. So I've got one student here. So I've got a student, and I'm going to share this with the student, and my computer is very slow. And, uh, uh, and yeah, I mean, you share with another person, but do they work on the same paper, both of them put hands on, on, on that work, or each of them separately? design a piece of it or put it together or they just share it to read yeah, it? They partner, I have them choose a partner with from the other class. Okay. And uh, I have them share their, their work so they will have already created maybe their first draft and I will ask them to partner up with one uh, member from the other group. And so mm -hmm. they will share amongst themselves in a way that they are allowed to edit each other's uh, work. You know. All right, good, good. So it's not just for them to do each other's work, but it's actually they can actually edit, then go in and edit. But they don't necessarily edit, they just leave comments. So I have them uh, go ah, in, okay. they right. check each other's work, they'll select a text and they'll add a comment. And I am very specific in the type of ways in which they can leave comments. For example, I'll ask them to leave three things that the, teach, the student does well and three things that they need to consider. So uh, it's very important that the things that they are to consider, let me back up, the, the things that they should consider and the things that they do well have to be based on feedback that I've already provided. Let me give you an example. So before I ask them to team up and start leaving comments and give each other uh, peer feedback, I will have already shared a list of very specific grammatical and mechanical issues in writing, academic writing, that and it's a it's a long list so subject verb agreement yeah like a cult right all of these things right so it's a long list of things so i i will have already talked to the whole student about uh the feedback i don't go into their individual work and leave comments yet the first step is for me just to give them as a whole group all of this this laundry list of things to consider for them to look at their own work to see, first of all, if they can, through self-assessment, identify those mistakes themselves. We go through that process. Then the second process after self-assessment is then the peer assessment. And that's where they share each other's work yeah, and right. they leave each other's comments about things that they do well and things that they need to consider. It's not like, oh, I like, you have a good title here, or I like this sentence. <laughs> it has to be. Now they go through the code, right? 
Yeah, it has to be exactly. It has to be a list of things that we've already talked about. It can't be anything right. else. And and there could be other things that are wrong as well. But my job I see is in the first step is to identify the the most serious types of errors, make that explicit to the whole group, and then use that as the basis for peer assessment later on. Yeah, and, and so they pair up mostly for feedback and and reading each other's works and leaving comments and have this kind of interaction. My point in here, and that's why uh, we kind of went through the academic aspect, I mean, the working aspect of students uh, departing from the technological area. Like a long time ago, like 10 years ago, uh, I was having a class, a, an online class, uh, in which students interacted with the students from England. I had both groups. I was in England with the group, and I had the group here in Aguascalientes online. And, uh, and the idea, and that's why my question was, the idea is that they interact uh, in order to create products uh, uh, as, as uh, pairs. They would choose a pair from Mexico and a pair from, from England, and they started to work on projects, which will give them uh, pr uh, products to each of them. The, the guys in England were having essays about uh, the, the discussions and the, dyna the dynamic, and the guys in Mexico were having uh, products like um, a new car uh, of a restaurant or something they create, right? In fact, I think I have a chapter of a book uh, describing this. this um, and my point is that back then, in, in that time, uh, the platforms, I suppose there were platforms, but, but maybe I didn't know them. And, and, and what I decided to do is just to leave them up to them to decide uh, how to make contact and how to interact, what technology to choose. Some of them were uh, doing through email, some of them were doing through the messenger, some others were doing through Facebook, which in Mexico was not that uh, in vogue in that time, but some of them started to use Facebook maybe because of that. And, uh, and, and they decided how to do it and have problems to have this contact and delayed a lot in the tasks. Now that I see this with Trilo and with uh, that, uh, the Canvas that we have talked before too, and uh, Office 365 and all these platforms, I see they give us all this opportunity to make students work together and solve these kind of uh, situations in which, uh, uh, in which they can actually work to produce something together. That, that's why I, I was asking the question, and how, how, how uh, if you have them work together, what kind of work they do, and uh, the creative part from the teacher starts there, where you have to actually think on the kind of task and the kind of ideas uh, that will make them actually work together. But it's not only about the task, it's also about the resources and the elements you provide around. Like right now, you're thinking about the platform itself, the organization of the platform. You're thinking about the code they're going to use. I mean, it's a mixture. It, it, that's the blending point of the technology and the academic aspect, exactly. And I think it's uh, I, uh, what I see here, what you have there is a nice idea and, and a good opportunity for the student. Well, I'm curious, Petey, because we've talked about this. I know you use a lot of, you use Facebook a lot and WhatsApp. I'm curious how, how uh, your students kind of interact and do you choose, do they choose and and what kind of context do you think where Facebook and, and or WhatsApp types of apps uh, really facilitate it, how they communicate? It's a really, really interesting topic. And uh, in fact, that was uh, today's topic that I wanted to, to explore, to talk about WhatsApp and some of the things that I saw in the classroom with my students. Uh, not from me. It was actually from teachers in training using these apps uh, I kind of recall some other examples that I had before, but not like the ones I've seen and the situations that, that, that I saw that were created. A uh, uh, couple of things to talk about that, and, and, and I would like to leave it as a, as a, just a, as a starting point to have this discussion in the following uh, cast. Um, uh, because uh, there are many, many, many aspects that that I, can, uh, I would like to put on the table because uh, it's not 
it, it most more than the, a presentation of what happens. It's a lot. It raises a lot of questions. It raises a lot of. It, it, I, I even detected uh, different models that lead me to uh, being a researcher and what kind of activity. And, and I found it goes too about it. Uh, uh, some attempts with the use of WhatsApp specifically. But uh, but yeah, I would I would like to 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 leave that uh, conversation for a further show because I know we have a uh, step up on time now, Ben. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, it took a little. No, it, it's okay. It's uh, okay. I'm I'm always I'm I'm I always like the, this dynamic because uh, you never know. Uh, I don't know if you feel sometimes like we we talked about something and there's a moment in which. Uh, we don't know how to run out of it because yeah. there are a lot of things to say and there are a lot of uh, interesting aspects and and you never know which is the 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 comment or or the that it's gonna really intrigue somebody or or, or have them uh, consider a certain aspect on the other hand, there are some times in which we start discuss we we don't yeah. know on but but that's why I like it and, and that's why today I would like to to wait a little bit because I know this WhatsApp and Facebook thing is going to raise a lot of more than and uh, and and I would like to 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 take the time to do it. Well, I think one of the main points I wanted to make in today's discussion is uh, that when you decide on technologies, you really have a reason for doing it. And I think that's the, the main point I want to make is it's not just, oh, Trello, it looks cool. I'm going to try it and see without, right. any, without any prior notion of, well, how do I, you know, want my students to communicate? How do I want the content to, to be delivered? All these questions that I talked about at the beginning needs to be part of the thought process, I think, before anyone really chooses the different types of technology so that you have kind of a expectation from the beginning now that could change of course and right. you know uh, you know i've uh, i'm probably guilty than more guilty than most about you know failing at technology i mean that's part of the the you know part of the i guess the lure of looking at different technologies is knowing yeah there's possible success but it could also fail right so you have to Try to know yourself as as a as a teacher, your own personal preferences as a teacher, the profile of your group, the resources that are available at your institution and 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 in your your context, and and make those decisions accordingly, right? And and try to find out what you know what what works and and reflect as you go through the learning process and and throughout the semester, but. Um, but the main point I want to make is really trying to put a lot of thought into why you're choosing certain types of technology. Right. And, you know, these, these questions that you're asking me are very good questions that I still have yet to answer that I need to answer before I ultimately decide on using Trello, uh, like the views, like how, do, how are students going to, you know, find those boards? Is it going to be too much to look at? And those are all very good considerations that, that, that uh, I still need to go through, um, but, but but Ben, but, but look at this. I mean, for example, on one side, uh, uh, I'm talking about the views because of my way of of thinking or preferences or comes to my mind. But at the same time, on the other hand, uh, I, I I made the first comment I made is that I can have a glance of how your mind is working about this course. It's a, a, a dichotomy there, like like yeah. uh, where do I go? Because so so maybe it's a matter of flexibility on the student. Yes, it's older and it's like that, and I suppose it's gonna be really really helpful because it gives uh, uh, transparent. I mean, I'm gonna I, I keep four main aspects about this. Uh, everything you mentioned about Trello. Uh, four main aspects uh, academically for and not only for Thriller but for any other platform. Uh, one of them, and there's no order in the way I put them, but one of them is the flexibility. How much flexibility you have in the institution to begin with, uh, uh, in the use of technology and the resources you have available, but also how much flexibility you are giving to students. Uh, I mean, all of them are combined, right? Uh, so, uh, and part of this flexibility is, is this aspect of um, 
uh, how do I view this? What's my, in which way me as a student gonna digest a little bit better this? In a simplistic way, in a, in a more elaborated way, in a, in a, in a wide view? Uh, and so, so I would go for the idea of flexibility in this. Uh, another of the aspects I, I detected is the, is the transparency aspect I mentioned. It gives a lot of transparency to the way you organize your class. And, but it gives a lot of transparency to the way you are thinking and, and elaborating and, and, and uh, putting things on the table, which leads me to what I just said. It gives me a piece of your mind. I can, I can have a view of how you are structuring this, and it may be clearer uh, for me as a student what, where's the direction. I mean, we, I can understand the goal, but there, there are going to be differences and variations on the way I interpret it. Now, looking at this organization, I can have kind of a closer view to the way you are interpreting and organizing this idea of the class. So that about transparency. So one is flexibility. The other one would be transparency. Uh, then the, another one would be the feedback part. Uh, it's a constant feedback on everything because beyond the organization, you are having the works there and you are having also interactions amongst the students, the students, teacher, teacher, students, and all these kind of um, interaction patterns that, uh, that to feedback for students. Feedback, even in the small details that uh, we may be focusing on the task, but the students may be focusing with this flexibility on the idea that, oh, I'm at this task and I'm still missing all of those others. And I'm, 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 and I still ha need some time. I mean, all of this, uh, all of these aspects come together. So flexibility, transparency, feedback, and and uh, the last one I have, which I think it's one of the key aspects that you mentioned since the very beginning in the way, uh, and the idea of selecting uh, the platform is the uh, between the kind of interact that are going to happen during the symbols themselves and this is a lot in training uh, you may were focusing a little bit more on the goal at the beginning or a little bit more on the interaction at the beginning but at the end or whatever you start your planning and organization they have to be aligned the, the kind of interactions that happens in the classroom will be proper to lead the students to including, uh, and, and this is why I mentioned this at the end, interaction leading goals, but this interaction may take into consideration the other three aspects, the flexibility, the feedback you can have, and the transparency, and not only from the teacher, but transparency amongst each other. So, uh, because you don't know where the learning is gonna come from, whether the famous click is gonna happen, Maybe it's never going to be with the teacher. Maybe the click is going to be when feedback, or maybe the click is going to be when I'm reading what I what I'm presenting at the end. So, so I think it it was, it was a very enriching talk, uh, not only because of the platform, but because of the all of the elements that we can appreciate. And, and I would keep this for, and I'm going to keep this paper uh, for writing it down and composing it because I think. Uh, there may be more aspects, but uh, personally, I would keep these four elements, the flexibility, the transparency, the feedback, and the interaction and goals in that way in order to consider uh, the platform that I'm going to use for the semester. And one thing I would add, especially to your feedback part of those, those elements that you just mentioned, is the potential feedback that you can uh, achieve if you open up your boards in this way from other educators, right? So other educators who right. are in business or academic writing uh, are going to be able to either follow this board, you know, they can watch or follow this this board themselves as well. And they can provide feedback uh, to me and, and uh, ask questions or even disagree or whatever. But I, as a teacher, are am open then to receiving feedback from others, uh, experts in this field and uh, that, obviously feeds into my own my own learning as well so um it's it's one of those things where you have to really look at your own teaching preference and see what you're comfortable with also obviously 
depends on the the age level of the the group and and maturity level and I mean there's a lot of variables here uh, to take into consideration but uh, for my purposes I wanted to share this and uh, hopefully stimulate some some discussion uh, if you're watching this video either live or watching the recording uh, let us know what you're using what technologies are you planning on using next semester what types of technology have worked for you which uh, technologies have been a struggle or a challenge for you those uh, I think are very very important uh, to so that we can all kind of learn and get information from each other about uh, different ways that we're using educational technology so pity I think uh, we're about an, at an hour here so um, yeah I think we can go ahead and sum up here and um, uh, yeah I want to thank everyone for for tuning in and uh, let us know what topics you want to uh, want to use the the new Trello teacher learning cast Trello now is available you can access it through Facebook and uh, let us know there's a space there that you can add comments I made that board open so anyone can go in and leave comments to any one of the cards there's one list that is available sp uh, precisely for possible topics and that's where you can share your feedback if you want and leave us ideas about what you would like for us to talk about of course you can leave comments in Facebook as well and uh, we take all those uh, into consideration in our own planning for future teacher learning broadcasts yes thank you Ben it was a really interesting talk I want to thank also everybody that is watching or that we're watching the on-demand video and we'll keep on doing uh, these talks, which uh, every time they are really interesting and they bring a lot of things to mind. And we invite you to join us every time you want. Excellent. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you in the next broadcast. Right. Thank you. Keep on learning, everybody.